is in regular communication. I encourage you for it to be routine, regular, like I said. Definitely random to support it because you don't want you don't want to just have one meeting a week, twice a meeting, and then they feel like, you know what, you're not you're not talking to me on a regular basis. Also, keep in mind different styles, different personality styles. Um, some people really, really work well. Just just call me once a week, okay? Twice a week, fine, but don't call me every day, okay? Some folks, um, um, some folks, they are, are they're more of the high I high S personality, where where they're more social. Uh, needy. Uh, sorry, they're they're more so, they, they they they're more social. I'm more social. Okay, if you just talk to me once a week or w- twice a week, it ain't gonna be enough for me. I like to talk to people once every two days. I like to hear from folks on a regular basis. So when my managers and my supervisors reach out to me on a regular basis, that encourages me. So you have to do it by people's styles and their personalities. Just be careful not to go to either extreme where you're micromanaging or macromanaging, where you're calling them all the time when you shouldn't or you're disappearing. So you got to look at the personalities. If the personalities are more DC dominant conscientious, then the regular routine, less random, is almost perfect. Once a week, once twice a week, don't overdo it. Stay out of their way. Let them perform, okay? Those that are more high I, high S, you need to interact with them more and just be more of a friend to them, touch bases with them, interact with them, but just don't suffocate. Let them breathe because if they come back to you and tell you, look, I feel like I'm on calls with you guys all the time, then we're getting in the way of them producing. All right, the leadership meetings, um, make sure that they're working. you're working off of the progress reports. Make sure you're focusing on addressing the problems. Make sure you're giving them the client satisfaction or the client feedback that you're getting at the home office. Okay, in the home office, you have a lot of information they need to know. So they need to know, look, customers are saying this, clients are saying this, customers are saying this about you, customers are saying this about us, uh, both good and bad. They need that information. And then give them that feedback. And also, this feedback is where you have to keep a track of what those issues are and identify and say, okay, who needs training where? Okay, uh, who needs training, who needs coaching, and who needs support so that I can make sure these problems go away or just have the hard reality that half the problems is just me, Maurice, walking across for calling the IT department, the claims department, the adjusters, and basically advocate for my team the things that need to be fixed, whether it's screens, whether it's reports, whether it's turnaround, whatever it is. My people out in the field are counting on me when they tell me their problems that I'm going to go up to my leadership team rhythm, but I'm also going to go to the other departments and advocate and find solutions for them. Otherwise, this falls apart if they don't feel that you're supporting them that way. All right, then the team-wide calls we talked about earlier, make them make them uh, have random, sorry, have very regular calls. Also random. Um, one owner very recently, uh, was early, was last week, Okay, they're going to remote. What they decided to do is they decided to order pizza for everybody on any given day uh, to arrive at their house. And they scheduled it with the pizza folks to, to, to for them to go out at a certain time. They were notified of it. And the owner started calling everybody about 30 minutes afterwards. Says, so how was the pizza? Do you like it? Hey, man, we're here for you. Very random. Very random. We didn't announce it. It was a really great idea. Um, so it's kind of like it's the equivalent of walking around the building with when everybody was together with a with a with an ice cream uh, cart, dishing out ice cream and candy for everybody. Well, you can't do that when you're remote. So come up with stuff. Get creative in your time wide calls. Make sure that you're positive. Okay. The vast majority of all calls that you do with your people are by default positive. Okay. And only about 10, 20% of your conversation should be corrective in nature. Okay. Do not depend and don't hide behind emails and don't hide behind text when you need to do coaching and correction. Pick up the phone, pick up the video and talk to each other. Don't hide because of the distance, all right? But by and large, your team-wide call, especially when it's with the executive, the executives and the whole company, the whole firm, those meetings should be 99% positive. That's not the time to talk about the negative stuff. The negative stuff is when you have those executive manager meetings with different departments or you go down into the huddles, okay? But the all-team meeting has got to be positive and forward-thinking.